let's talk about wedding timelines, right? So this is a question I get all the time. And as a photographer, I love helping my couples plan out their perfect timeline. It's one of the few things I have a huge opinion about. <laughs> Let's be honest, I have a huge opinion about everything. So my name's Heather McKay. I run McKay's Photography out of Rochester, New York. Been a wedding photographer since 2002, which is like the film era. I started with film, shooting, shooting on film. So I've seen and done pretty much any kind of wedding you can imagine at this point, and I have kind of like a sweet spot for the wedding timeline. So that's what I wanna share with you right now. So if you haven't stopped by before, uh, this YouTube channel just like hit the like button and if you feel like subscribing for more content like let me know <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts too if you're watching this and you've done uh, you've had your wedding and what your timeline looked like okay so without further ado here is my ideal timeline uh, if you watch the end I'll talk about church weddings but a regular old wedding like you know 150 guests one location or very close together in the in distance uh, you know, most of them get married around 4.30, 5 o'clock, somewhere in that range, 4.30 to 5.30. So what I like to do is I think eight hours of wedding photography coverage is perfect. So I'll work like two to 10, right? Okay, so there's the answer, but how do I structure the whole day? That's the question. That's why you're here, right? You're probably a wedding couple trying to figure out your timeline and maybe your photographer hasn't told you. Most photographers don't. I'm very opinionated and the timeline Honestly, the reason I care about it so much as a photographer is that it dictates how much time we have for photos. I can set your expectations for what kind of photos are realistic and we can build in time where we need to based on what you want out of your wedding photos. So that's why it's important. There's nothing worse than me being rushed to do 4,000 formal portraits of family members that are nowhere to be found. <laughs> so, all right, so here it is. This is my timeline. I'll cut right to the chase. So I usually show up at like two o'clock, sometimes one, one thirty, depending on the wedding. Two o'clock is about perfect. What I do is let's just assume that I'm talking about a timeline where everything's at one spot, venue where you can get ready on site, the ceremonies on site, uh, that kind of stuff. So we'll talk about that. And at the end, I'll give you some alternative options for multi-location like church weddings. So two o'clock ish, I'll show up. Uh, usually I get there a little early to dump all my bags and store stuff for the reception because there's a lot of gear that we bring that us wedding photographers bring for the reception like lights and light stands and that kind of garbage so we like I'll dump all that stuff and I'll hide it at the wedding reception location and I'll kind of scope out the venue if I haven't been there before I'll check out where we might be able to take pictures uh, what the lighting looks like that day. I don't like doing site visits ahead of time, so I like to just take like 10 or 15 minutes and get the lay of the land uh, when I show up. Then I'll go find the bride or the groom, whoever is ready, or the bride, bride, groom, groom, whatever kind of wedding it is. I'll find spouse A <laughs> and I'll see how they're doing getting ready. If you're almost ready, then I'll just like jump right in and start taking pictures. I like to meet the mom, I like to meet the siblings, that kind of stuff. Uh, I like to just see how everyone's doing. And then if it's if you're both getting ready at the same place, I'll go pop over and do the same thing for spouse B, the groom, the bride, whoever, uh, and just see how they're doing, see if there's any stress, any last minute stuff, chaos, somebody forgot the rings, whatever. I just like to know like how everyone's doing before I jump right in. So also part of the reason I usually show up early. <laughs> so let's just assume everything's going smoothly and you're being pampered and your hair is still getting done and you're about to get in your wedding dress. I just start photographing the details. So one thing that speeds it up for us is if you can have all your details in one spot, cut the tags off the dress, things like that slow me down. So if you're worried about pricing with photographers and how much time you need, the more you can have that garbage ready to go for us, the quicker our job will be and the better uh, general photos we're going to have. So I usually, pre again, I prep my couples on this ahead of time before their wedding. I tell them to do this for me. So that way when I show up, everything's kind of in a pile and then I can move it around and get all those detailed photos like your shoes, your garter, your necklace, if you don't have it on, all that stuff. The dress, like where is it? Usually I cut the tags off your dress. Like most people don't even think of that kind of stuff. So, and I usually, uh, here's another fun thing that I do. I usually bring a fancy hanger and I'll switch it out because the wedding dresses are like three grand and they come on a crappy plastic hanger. So I usually bring one to, for that dress photo that's hanging up, even though I don't really like that photo at all. <laughs> okay, so I'll spend like, as you can see, that's like 10, 15 minutes of dinking around with your wedding details, trying to get detail photos. 
while I'm doing that, I'm kind of talking to whoever's there, getting to know the room, meeting the bridesmaids, that kind of stuff. Uh, and that warms them up to me. So it's part of the reason I start with the details. First, I just want to get it over with because I'm not a big fan of detail photos and they're not that important in my opinion. And then I can segue right into, and I can just forget about them the rest of the day, and I can segue right into capturing what's happening in the room. While I'm doing those detail photos, I'm talking to the other people in the room, I'm getting a sense for the flow and the vibe and the relationships, and I'm picking up on any drama that's been going on all morning. <laughs> and so it's like 10 or 15 minutes of that, and then maybe 15 minutes of taking pictures of everybody getting ready. I like to take like different kinds of photos of that, which I'll get into in a different YouTube video of like my approach. And then, I mean, if you're ready to go, I'll just like throw you in your dress. Let's do it. Like the, the main thing that holds that up is mom. Mom's never around. Bridesmaids are never ready. So I usually, if I need to, that's when I start hurting people. I say, get mom, go get your dress on. Bridesmaids, get your dress on. And then as soon as everyone's in their clothes, their wedding clothes, then I get the bride in her dress, right? So I do that at the end. Uh, and that way everybody's really fresh. And then that way everybody looks good in the, those photos of them helping you get in your dress. That process takes like two seconds to get you in your dress. Sometimes Some dresses are more d difficult than others, but generally speaking, I'll get you going in there. And then that's when I roll right into, for me, this is what I do, I roll right into your close-ups, where you're finished and you look amazing and your makeup is perfect and your hair is perfect and everything's ready. I'll run right into that. I'll get a picture of you and your mom, you and your maid of honor, and Specifically, I knock out the like must-have bride shots. The must-have bride shots are a close-up of your face, looking beautiful, um, usually like from above, and it's a nice close-up of your face before you get sweaty, because let's be honest, you planned a July wedding and it's hot as balls. And then I'll do a three-quarter, you know, like nice little photo like this, and then I'll do a full length if I can. And if not, I'll do that right when we get outside. Like if your room you're getting ready in is bonkers. But generally at this point, I'll pull you out of the room if I have to. Uh, and then if we can, I will do you and your parents, you and your siblings, you and your girls. So all of that stuff is done in like 15 minutes right when you get in your dress. What slows it down is people can't find stuff, the room's a disaster, someone's missing, what I mean there's you know it's like herding cats if you have too many people in your bridal party so but that's why I like doing parents siblings uh, if grandma's around we'll do grandparents so usually they come right before the ceremony though so I used to have I usually have to get them right after then I'll go I'll put you back in your room if I've pulled you out I'll put you away to hide and then I'll go do the same thing for the groom side and the reason I, and I'm using a uh, heterosexual relationship as an example, but this applies regardless of who you're marrying. I'm um, just using it because it's easier to like explain. So I do that because the bride is usually doesn't want to be seen by the guests and the guests will start showing up about a half an hour before the wedding. So I like to take the bride outside if we can or wherever and have free reign before Aunt Josie shows up and wants to talk your ear off for an hour, like right before you're getting married. So I like to do the bride first. And so then I'll go find the guys and I will do the same thing with the groom. I will do a couple photos of him getting finished. I usually just tell him like, hey, be showered and I have pants on and the rest I'll capture. So usually the guys are pretty much ready because literally it takes two seconds to put a jacket on. Um, I'll usually try to go find the boutonnieres and put the boutonnieres on for the guys. I usually just do that for them. So like, let's say I show up at two, I've finished with the girls at like 2.30, honestly. If things aren't delayed, I can do all of that very, very quickly, mostly because I've been doing this for so freaking long. Then, so by then like 2.30, 2.45, I'll go find the groom and do the same thing. I'll get him in and finish getting ready, make sure we have all the guys, make sure we have his parents, that kind of stuff. And then close up of the groom, his details, especially his jacket and boutonniere because all day people are gonna hug him and they're gonna ruin his boutonniere and they're gonna get makeup all over his shoulder. <laughs> so I do all those close ups and detail photos of the groom before the ceremony, before his boutonniere is destroyed and there's makeup all over his jacket. Smart, right? And then of course the groom is fast, right? So that's like five, 10 minutes. I will do some getting ready photos of the groom and those guys hanging out. I like to like kind of sneak in there and see what they're naturally doing because they're usually doing all kinds of wacky stuff like watching Anaconda 2 or playing Madden or like there's some, there's always some sort of weirdo things they're doing. 
Um, and if I have to, I'll herd them and get them to do a shot or whatever. But you know, sometimes the girls are crazier. That is true. But generally speaking, the guys are just hanging around waiting for the girls to be done because it's like, it takes a lot to like do all this hair and makeup, right? So yeah, he's pretty quick and it just depends on if the parents are there or not. So what you can do again to speed that up is make sure you tell them that you need them ahead of time. Tell them to be there early. If your family is not punctual as a rule, tell them you need them to be there a half hour before you actually need them to be there especially because it's a wedding. So weddings just take longer. Everything's worse. <laughs> okay, so then that's it. So I've got like 90% of the must-have photos are done before the ceremony. That's amazing. If you want to do a first look, which is where the bride and groom get to see each other before the ceremony, then I'll kick everybody out. I'll find a good spot for that, and I'll have just the couple be the, do the first look. I set that up. I get them ready, and then I bring you know, I put partner A in position, tell them what's happening, and then I'll bring partner B down and then I'll run around and capture the whole thing. So if you're doing a first look, I would say like do that at three o'clock. Um, and that way we can do family formals together. I typically don't put the bride and the groom's family photos and the groom and the bride's family photos. I don't generally do that. But if you want that done, if you wanna be in each other's family photos, then do a first look and get that done at like three o'clock, 2.45, 3 o'clock. Um, and then you can have the family show up right after, like three o'clock. So let's say this is a 4.30 wedding. I would show up at two, I would get all the family stuff in the first look at three, um, and then I would have all of that stuff done by four o'clock. Like, absolutely. Like, and that's giving me myself a buffer of people running late. Does that make sense? So like a half hour of all that stuff. And if I have extra time, then I'll do extra detail photos once the bride's in her dress and the groom's in his suit. I'll do extra bridesmaids photos, like the bride with each of her girls, the groom with each of his guys. Uh, I, I want that whole first half hour before the ceremony is dead time for all of us. The, the bride needs to be hiding because guests start showing up about a half hour ahead. And then also I need to get ready for the ceremony. I need to get re-metered, my camera like settings right, ready to go. Uh, I need to like have the lay of the land. I want to get all those detail photos because usually the florist is finished that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to do actually as a photographer for that half hour. So you as a wedding couple might be like, well, what are they doing? Why is this half hour missing? Well, I have a lot to do actually. I'm very busy. Um, and also again, I'm like checking out and finding out who grandma is, where is she, making sure she knows that I need her to stick around after the ceremony for photos and all that. All right, and that's it. So then you pretty much like go the rest of the day. I will just follow the action. So let's say it's a 4.30 ceremony. We did the first look at three. I showed up at two. All those family photos are finished. Well, what am I gonna do the, during cocktail hour? What I do right after the ceremony is I steal the bride and groom away because now you're that you're actually married. There's so much more energy and romance for those photos. So the, any photos I get of you as a couple beforehand are mostly traditional. It's like, you know, you just standing there, the ones mom and grandma are gonna love, like the prom pose or just like normal, you know, wedding photos, like just standing there. Then afterwards is when I get all the cutesy ones and romantic ones because you have so much more energy. At that point, it's basically you guys, you just ignore me and I'll capture your natural dynamic. I try to sneak you away for like 20 minutes maybe of the crowd. Try to get away from the crowd, that's the key. If you do all that stuff and you do family forward photos, like big groupings between the ceremony and the reception, it literally takes forever because you have 42 aunts and uncles leaning over my shoulder taking the same picture and then no one's paying attention to me. Uh, I'm pretty commanding and especially after all these years, I'm pretty able to get their attention, but a meek photographer or a quiet introvert photographer is gonna have a harder time getting all the peanut gallery in the background settled down and getting you to focus on me. So it just depends on who your photographer is and how they can handle that situation. So I just prefer to nip it in the bud and not even be in that situation by doing all my formals ahead of time. So the only other thing I would do after the ceremony is like I said, grandparents, if they've showed up during, like right before the ceremony, we'll pull them aside, get grandparents. Sometimes I'll do those just before we enter the reception. Uh, like that's just usually easier, especially because they're not typically too mobile. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll do like the whole bridal party together. So I'll do like, I'll bring the whole bridal party with me. Well, you'll exit the ceremony and we'll walk down the aisle. I'll do the whole bridal party. We'll do a bunch of groupings. We'll do a little bit more of like the groom side and the bride side, like bridesmaids, groomsmen, those kind of photos, one or two poses of like the whole bridal party together. 
And then I'll dismiss the bridal party and I'll usually have your groomsmen go get you drinks and food. Because <laughs> by this time you're ready to party and you're done with photos, you're totally done. But I still need a few more of you guys. So I usually start with the bridal party, then dismiss them. And then if there's any random family photos that we really need, like an aunt that you're really close to or something where you really, really, really wanna get a photo with like you and your second cousins or something, I will have those groomsmen or your siblings or whoever I just dismissed go and fish those people out of the cocktail hour and bring them to us. It's another way for me to keep it super efficient so that they're not, that we don't have the whole reception watching us and distracting us so that we can get that photo very, very quickly. So by the, while they're going and getting those extra people that we really need photos of, or like maybe your brother was late and you just, we still haven't gotten him for any photos, I'll send somebody from the bridal party to go get those people for me. While they're gone, that's when I'm doing all the pictures of the two of you as a newlywed. So I'll get your rings on your fingers. I get you guys canoodling. Um, I'll do like several different poses, all those detail photos, all that energy and romance. We'll walk around and do different stuff. So it's like 15, 20 minutes maybe. And that by then they've brought those other people over. Then we'll knock those extra photos out. Then I'll run up ahead of you and we will go to the cocktail hour. I try to get my couples to the cocktail hour and one of the reasons I can do that is because I have all those photos done ahead of time. That's the way you get to enjoy your cocktail hour is having less formals first of all and second of all getting them done ahead of time. So in between there's not much to do. I mean that's if we have to we'll get like you two with your both sets of parents or something like that but I prefer at this point to like let you go and generally speaking you're tired of your photographer at this point so less is more. So during the cocktail hour, again, I've got to go through and I've got to go get that reception room before everybody destroys it. I need to get all those details, your centerpieces, your favors, all that garbage you've cried about and spent time and money making it or worrying about it or whatever. I have to capture all that stuff. So again, I need like a half an hour to get your cake, all that stuff, get a room shot of the reception, um, set up my lighting for the first dance, all that jazz. So I need that half hour before the reception opens um, to get all those detailed stuff. Okay, so and that's when you get to like walk around your cocktail hour and enjoy yourself or some couples and I really recommend this, some couples like sneak away and they just take 20 to 30 minutes to themselves to, pre, to like just literally by themselves, especially if it's a hotel or something and you can sneak away to your room. I highly recommend that because it's a whirlwind of a day. So I know this video is getting long, but thanks for watching all the way through. So I'm hoping this helps you. Leave me a comment below if this is helping because I know a lot of photographers don't help with the timeline, but it's literally the one thing we should do the most of because we need time to, based on your wedding choices. No, not just guest count, but also how many people did you invite? Who do you want for photos? Do you want all your second cousins? Well, we need time for that. Okay, I've gone through, we're up to the cocktail hour now, right? So I'm inside doing the reception details, getting ready for that, talking to the coordinator, meeting the DJ, getting on the same page with those guys, making sure that you know they have everything they need, um, that kind of stuff. So if I have time or when I'm done, I'll walk back out to the cocktail hour and I'll just do a quick lap around the room like one or two times. I don't need much because by then everybody's got one drink in them and they're all relaxed and I can kind of see who's grouped together. And I'll just, I'll run around and go get couple photos. If there's extra time, like you have an hour and a half for your cocktail hour, then I'll have plenty of time for this. Then I'll go find the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and I'll see if they have dates with them or maybe their parents are there. So I like to go do that stuff. It, the reason I do it that way is because you at this point are tired of me and also all my pictures have you in them. <laughs> so I don't need you for those photos. I like to go find the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and see if they have, you know, sometimes their parents are there, like I said, or, or they have a date or sometimes it's like their wife and their kid, something like that. So I like to get those kind of photos for them. Um, and I usually, if I have time, I will go find your parents and I will see about your parents. Like, hey mom, do you have all of your siblings at this wedding? So again, that's an important photo that you probably aren't thinking of that's in, that you should get. But at the end of the day, if I take that for you and for them, they're gonna love it. And you don't need to be in that photo. Like, there's no need, I mean, unless you really, really want to, but I like finding grandparents, parents, and their kids. So like the grandparents' kids. I wanna get that family photo. So it's nothing to do with you. It's just really important to get. Like one wedding I did, uh, I found out during dinner that the grandparents were both still alive in their late 80s, and all of their 10 kids 
above the age of 60 were all in attendance at this wedding. That's a very important photo that the bride and groom did not think to ask for. Those are the kinds of things that I go looking for. Maybe because I'm one of six kids and I think of these things, like we're never all together. Um, plus those people, I mean, at 60 and above, like that's 10 kids, they're all still alive. The parents are still alive. That's so important. So I like to leave a little room in the day for that and I will go find that photo at some point. So if you're watching this and you have a different photographer, that's something to maybe think about. Like, would your parents want a picture with their own parents? Of course, why wouldn't they, <laughs> you know? So make that happen and ask for it. Okay, so anyway, introduction, like again, 4.30 ceremony. We got married, it was a half hour ceremony. We've got an hour for cocktail hour. That puts us at six o'clock. So what happens then is you get introduced, right? So the DJ or band or whoever, the MC is gonna pull you guys all out of the cocktail hour, bridal party, parents generally get introduced also, um, and then you two. They'll line you up and while they're doing that, I'm casing the you know reception area, getting more candids and things. But you generally get introduced and I highly recommend you go straight into your first dance. That is the most efficient, thing you can do for yourself on the wedding day is go right into your first dance. Um, the alternative is you could go right into your parent dances. Um, some people go right into the cake cutting. So like my point is like, let's get that stuff done early while you still want to. <laughs> Cause anything that happens after dinner, you are not gonna wanna do and you're gonna hate it when I come and pull you away to go cake, cut the cake. Like. You're just like, oh, I just started talking to this aunt and I wanna see them. Like, I don't wanna go do anything. You're not gonna to wanna to do anything after the dinner. <laughs> you'll, you'll do it, but you're not gonna to want to. So the more crap you can cram into that introduction, the better. I mean, it's 10, 15 minutes. Have your servers, like the, have the venue, serve the salads. Unless it's a buffet, there's no reason why they can't serve salads or have salads ready to go. And that gives people something to do. They can eat while you're doing that. Or they can do salads during toasts. The hard part for me as a photographer doing salads during toasts is that there's servers walking all over the place in all the photos when I'm trying to get reaction shots from toasts. So I prefer it if you can get those salads out and then do toasts. That's just my preference. So again, Introduction at six, you're sat down by 6.15, 6.20, depending on how much of those, how much you take my advice and get all those dances done ahead of time. You can go right into your first dance. Um, the bridal party can be on the dance floor, that's great. You can, the bridal party then can sit down and the DJ will manage all of this. And then you can go right into your parent dances. So again, as long as there's some food on the tables for the, for the um, venue or for your wedding guests, <laughs> then, no problem, knocked all that out, right? So go right into your first dance, maybe the parent dances, sit that bridal party down, get your toasts during the salad course, and just get through dinner. And that way you can enjoy dinner and you're done. Um, if you don't wanna do the dances ahead of time, so that's generally like 6.30, 7, 7.30, that's dinner, okay? Um, and what happens is that's the best time of day for lighting. <laughs> So I hate you for doing it this way, but this is what every wedding does. Everybody's eating and inside during the most gorgeous lighting of the entire wedding day, especially if it's a July wedding. It's a tragedy. I would, if I get married, I'm having a totally different, I'm flipping everything around. <laughs> so my point is uh, after dinner, when you're done eating, go find your photographer and go get some sunset photos. Again, it's a nice for you two to have like two minutes by yourself to like get some air, be in the moment, be like, oh my gosh, we got married, holy doodle, uh, we did it, you know, and it's like really fun for you to just take 10, 15 minutes while everyone's eating, no one cares, everyone's going back to the bar, everyone's going back through the buffet, no one's gonna notice you're missing. Go do that, then come back in and then cut your cake. So I like cutting the cake as a way to end dinner and I don't even care if guests are still eating. The Part of the reason I feel that way is because I've seen so many wedding cakes get served too late and half of your wedding guests have left and no one ever eats it. Like half of it doesn't get eaten. So what's the point of like cake tasting and like getting all this amazing dessert if no one ever sees it? So I think it's important to get that stuff cut and done and ready to go. And your venue is excited that you've already cut it because then they're not waiting on you. They can cut it at their leisure when they're like through the service of cleaning up all the other plates and stuff. 
So that's the way I like to do. I like to cut the cake at like 7.30, 8 o'clock. Usually we'll go, I'll take you outside for a few minutes for sunset photos if we can. Then we come right back in, we cut that cake. Typically the only people I like really alert to that, the DJ will make an announcement, but half the time nobody cares. But I'll bring your parents over so because the parents like seeing that kind of stuff. Then you cut that cake and then boom, it is party time and you have nothing else to do. Uh, and I mean that really like stop doing dumb stuff like garter garter and bouquet toss like it's so just just stop <laughs> please <laughs> please don't do those anymore i'll do a video different video and things you can do instead that are better so come back for that so that's it there's your timeline so when i talk about this with my couples i'm working two to ten and that's how it goes i get you ready i get your family photos three o'clock you get married around 4 30 5 o'clock whatever i mean you shift everything a half hour depending on when your ceremony is and that's it do intros try to maximize those like must do events like parent dances and then it's party time so all i really need from dancing is you know half hour 45 minutes max at the reception that's all i need it's gonna be the same 40 people people start leaving it's just more people get disheveled. Like, I don't need to stay until 11. The only reason I'll stay until 11 is if you're going to do the stupid garter toss and bouquet toss. Then I have to stay later. So it's your fault that you're paying me too much money. <laughs> it's not mine. It's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault for doing those dumb events. Um, but we can always do those earlier also. No one says you have to do them at the end of the night. Like, you can do them whenever you want. It's the modern era. Do it the way you want to do it. So I usually work two to 10. That's usually more than enough time. That's two full hours at the reception. And that allows plenty of time for delays. Like let's say you don't want to do your first dance right away. That's fine. We'll cut the cake and then we'll go into your first dance. So you cut the cake to kind of get people's attention again. And then you go right into your first dance, which also gets their attention, wraps up dinner. People start heading back to the bar, going back around the d dinner if they need, if they want a second. Uh, and then you can do your parent dances then if you want to. But that stuff takes a lot longer. It's harder to find dad. It's harder to find mom. It's harder to get all that stuff going after you've done dinner. So that's why I like doing it when you get introduced. And that's it. That's a wedding day timeline. Okay, so you stuck along to the end. Thank you for that. Leave me comments below if you found this helpful. Um, what I want to talk about now is your bonus for watching to the end is what's the difference between a church wedding, okay? So um, the difference with a church wedding is that typically those are on Saturdays and usually they give you a time slot of 11 a.m. or 1 p.m. So that's really hella early. The reason they do that is because they need you guys to be gone by 3, 3.30 at max, so that they can have a 5 p.m. service. So that's tough, right? So with, this, with that day, you're gonna need like 10 hours from your photographer because you have to get ready earlier. So even if I don't come do getting ready photos, I need to be at the church at like noon for your one o'clock ceremony. The groomsmen need to be there at noon for the one o'clock ceremony because there's so much more stuff to do um, for that kind of event because you can't get in there early to set it up. And they don't know where to do and they're la 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 la. So there's just like that generally grooms are gonna get there at noon, a groomsman, and then you'll come in like right before. So if you're getting ready there or you can finish getting ready there, like if they have a bridal room, that's different. Um, I would get there by 11 uh, and then get getting ready photos there. So that's the difference between a church wedding and then you have a huge gap in between and that's where we can like go somewhere else in the city and take the bridal party somewhere fun and meaningful for you. Uh, we could always do family photos, but generally speaking, we're getting kicked out of that church. So if you want church altar photos and you want a crap ton of family photos, you have to plan ahead because the church will boot us out as soon as they can. And then they're usually walking around the altar, like moving your flowers out of the way and stuff during the photos that we're taking. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Churches drive me nuts if you can't tell. But so anyway, that's the way it goes. So the, the key with that is you need family wranglers to wrangle people on both sides. You need like who's the bossiest, most organized person in your family or someone who you think is going to get in your photographer's way like an amateur photographer. Put them in charge of wrangling all the family members. Like, I'm worried about lighting and I'm worried about how you look up on that altar for my photo. I don't need to know who Aunt Peg is and who all, like, please, just like get somebody else in charge of that and make sure they know ahead of time they are the family wrangler and they know exactly who you want for family photo. All I really need to know is like, okay, I want a picture with me and all my second cousins. That way I can yell and I can be like, hey, second cousins of the bride, come on down. I don't need to know all their names. It is helpful, but 
I mean, come on, honestly, you know, I'm working fast and I ain't got time for that. So we just like put you at the altar, the two of you, and then I add and subtract people. So we manage that situation as best we can. But those photos, the more formal photos you want of extended family, the longer it's all gonna take. So you gotta budget like 45 minutes for that, at least. Part of it is that you leave and then all the guests are there and then you have to double back and come back into the altar and all those guests are hanging out, everyone's blocking the aisle, like no, we're missing grandma because she already escaped, it's like, it's a nightmare. <laughs> those photos in churches are nightmares. If the church has a beautiful garden outside with like benches and stuff like that, and it's nice out, not full sun, we can take them outside and do them outside. I prefer that over the altar photos because there's nothing worse than like a Jesus growing through your head. But whatever, it's up to you, it's your wedding. <laughs> and these are your wedding photos. That's just my opinion as a feisty photographer. But that gives you an idea of how long to budget. Budget generally on the day, especially if you're driving anywhere in a limo, if it takes you, however much time it takes you to get from A to B, like location A to location B on a regular day, double or triple that amount of time when you're dealing with like a large bridal party, large guest count, or just because it's a wedding day. <laughs> it just takes longer to get everybody actually in the car to drive to that venue. So just double all the time that it takes that you think it's gonna take, just double it. And then if you have a really efficient, feisty, opinionated photographer like me, then it makes it easier. <laughs> but if you don't, you're gonna be the one barking orders at everybody and bitching at everybody all day long. So there you go. So that's why I like finding uh, a bossy aunt or somebody who's really um, organized or opinionated or loud in the family because then they can help family wrangle everybody because it's literally like herding cats, even if you've told them all what's happening. <laughs> so there you go, there's your wedding day timeline. So if you like this, share this with your engaged friends. I would love it because I see this question in uh, engaged Facebook groups constantly. Everyone's always wondering about the timeline. So. Go ahead and feel free to share it with people. I would love it. Um, I've given you pretty much all of my opinions also in this video. Uh, and if you have any other ones, like if you really wanna know my secret of why I don't like Carter Toss and Bouquet Toss and what to do instead of that, leave me a comment and I will share that with you because there is a better way to do the same thing. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.